Okay, so this is a short video of me explaining the how I use Notion to track my tasks. This is mainly for Matt and Joel. Um, so, and I'll, I'll kind of talk through you. So what this is, is it's a database in Notion that I use for the task tracker. And I'll talk to you kind of how it's going to work here. So if we switch over and we go to Notions, this is just a page and you start a new database. And the database is called Task Manager. And kind of, I guess I flow between two and then I'll tell you the most important things. So the first most important view is this active tasks and this goes off of the pull base task process from Cal Newport. And so these would be the active tasks. And then you can see I'm trying to limit it to three here. So that's why it's in the parentheses three and then I have five things going here, including this video. Now kind of how this is works. The reason this is different than Excel, and this could work in Excel if you had each row as a task, and then within each task you have a Google Doc chip, and each of these would be the Google Doc chips. But because it's a database, there's different kinds of data that can be input into each row, and then each of these views references the same database that it's looking at. So that's why this is, it's like filtered views, but you can click between the filtered views a lot faster. So now the today view is is more of a list that we're used to. So I like to have an ID column. This is a to done parameter, which is a, like a Boolean positive or negative. There's a checkbox that's easy to do. And we have the task, the due date, the Cal Newport category, and then you can also assign it to areas and projects. And then Joel will think this is incredibly funny that the AC turned on. So I'm gonna go pause it. And here the, the AC turned off, but the computer fan is still running. Okay. So going from left to right, I have the ID. So that's just the number of pages that have been generated as kind of like an index in a database. Then we have this print, this uh, property called done, which is just a checkbox, a Boolean, true or false. And then we have a task, which is a small text field. Now granted, each of these rows are a number of prop, each of these rows represents a file, if you will, a record that also has its own page or like Google Docs sheet associated with it. And then it has a due date and then a Cal category projects. These are all different types of data that are associated with each column or record as it would be called on a database. Now one of these properties is an archive button and this button can be set to do a number of steps. And what I have the button set to do is to check the done box and then also to change the Cal category to done, which is a good time to discuss the Cal categories. So I'll click it here so we can see the Cal categories. Now there's three sections of categories when you have a uh, property that is set to status. And so a certain record can only be set to one status at a time. And then it, it categorizes the statuses in a to-do status, an in-progress status, and a complete status. And right now, I'm going to read them off to you, and then I'll kind of explain which each one is. So a to-do is, um, this is something you've not started working on yet. So I have not started. Urgent, this is something that's more important. Ready is something that's ready to be worked on. And then back burner is like, uh, if, you, if you have something to go work on, then that's where it goes. But it's definitely, back burner is a very low priority. Active, if I select active, it becomes in progress and it's turning into, that's one of the things that, um, that's one of the, if, if it is active, if the status is active, it goes in that active task list independent of the due date. And then um, there's in progress, which means it's in progress. So it's kind of an urgent task that has been started would be in progress. And then clarify is a good status for if you're looking at a task that you've written down, then uh, and you're, it's, not, it's not clear what it makes sense, then it, it needs to be clarified more. And I, I found that the more that I clarify, like what am I trying to do here, then the, the efficiency goes up through the roof. Okay, and then we have scheduled. So this would be something like, oh, I'm gonna talk to my mom on this day, like that's scheduled. Or if you have a, a team meeting or something like that. If there's work that's scheduled or then you, you put it in the scheduled. To discuss is a really important one too. That was when you need to um, talk with somebody. But if you have like a, if you have the person linked in another place, you, or you can search their name, or or just look through your to discuss, and you can look at it on your phone and see to discuss, and that's pretty quick. And then waiting is also a really important category because then you know, okay, I'm not waiting on anything for this, but this still is not done. But you kind of know at a glance it sets the categories what's being done. <laughs> okay. So those are the categories. Now. This is a today view. Now today view means that all the due dates are today. Um, I do have an inbox view as well. So this is kind of new categories that are coming in. It's less filtered. Um, if you want to add a new task, you just click new. And this is creating a new record in the database. And the nice thing about this is, is that when you click new, you can either hit new, or you can also make templates for your new. So if I'm starting like a new video, I'm gonna click this template, and it has different steps that you can build the template and then 
it'll import all that information for you. Um, so like if I do a, a quarter, quarterly progress report, for example, then it's going to have all these questions that I already have made in the template for me. And then since I didn't want to make those, I will just select them and then trash them. Okay, different views I have today. This is just a different view of what needs to be done today. Another one I really like is Cal All. So Cal All is going to show me everything that's done as well. And then Cal To Do shows me everything that just needs done on a calendar type view. Now, I also have this media schedule one. So any task that is put into the media hobby, any task that has a media hobby project, then will show up on this calendar. So if there's another task that doesn't have that property on it, doesn't have that. If there's a task that doesn't, that is a different project, it's not going to show up on this calendar. So that's kind of nice when you're working with other things. Um, and there's different lists of what's coming up in the next seven days to do versus what's due today, which is kind of the same as the today view, active tasks. Categorize, this is really nice. If you have a long list of tasks that need categorized, you can move them around. Like, okay, this is done. This needs to go here. This needs to go here. I'm trying to look for other ones that I use. Past due, this is how I can sort through tasks really quickly because I have it set up to where, okay, what is the task? When is it due? And I can quick here change. I can quickly change the category. Update the due date. We'll change the due date to today, and then archive again. will make it go away because it sets it to done, done, and checks the due the done checkbox as well. So that's kind of what I've been using. So I'm able to throw the reason this is valuable. I'm able to throw all of the tasks into this this software, and then it's not forgot. I know it's not forgotten, and then I can go to the all to do list. It's going to take a moment to look through all the records. But I can look at all of the to-do tasks and then you can filter and sort this information. So this information is filtered and it's basically saying if the done is not checked then it's put here. So every check, every task that is done is not shown on this list. Hence it is all to-do. And then it is sorted, sorted. The data is also sorted by the cal category. And so we can see that all of them are grouped. But you could sort them in a different way if you want to. You could sort by due date if you wanted to. Um, or you could sort by project. And then you can also go to a project view as well. So if you're specifically working on one project, you can set up a view in your project to just show tasks that are associated with that project. And the nice thing is, is that if you change the due date there, it's going to show up in your, hey, what do I have to do today? Um, Thing. So anyways, it's just a different way to do a to-do list. That's kind of how I've been doing it. And the really nice thing, why I can't... So Google Docs and Google, Google Sheets is tough because it doesn't auto-update. It won't auto-update the filter. So that's a challenge there. Um, if you're doing it in like Google Tasks, you cannot see... You can see it kind of in two use. A list view that has everything. You can't like sort by types. And then this is nice because you do have that control over your data and it is web-based, so you can use it on your phone, your iPad, or um, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your iPad or the computer all at the same time and it's kind of syncing within itself. So yeah, those are kind of the benefits of the, the Notion Task Manager and I hope you maybe learned something of how I'm using this and you found it helpful. Okay, have a nice day, Joel and uh, Matt. All right, bye-bye.